pathophysiology of heart failure and the body's compensatory mechanism. Heart failure is a decrease in pumping action of the heart. Most patients remain asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic for years. So what happens in systolic and diastolic heart failure? In systolic heart failure, there is incomplete ventricular emptying and in diastolic heart failure, there is inadequate ventricular filling. Both systolic and diastolic heart failure lead to increased left ventricular and diastolic pressure. Both disorders primarily involve left ventricle, then pulmonary venous and capillary pressure rise, then pulmonary artery pressure rises and this interferes with the emptying of the right ventricle leading to increase in ventricular diastolic and central and systemic venous pressure. These increase the heart failure by increasing ventricular afterload and preload. Increased preload leads to increased blood volume edema and pulmonary congestion and production of inflammatory cytokines tumor necrosis factor endothelin and superoxide nitric oxide causes cardiac cell damage and destruction what's the body compensatory mechanism in heart failure the body's compensatory mechanism in heart failure is known as left ventricular remodeling and that modulates the left ventricular functions for months to year there are three important features increase systemic vascular resistance, increase blood volume, and increase in venous pressure. The increase in systemic vascular resistance is a neurohormonal response. There is activation of the sympathetic nervous system that leads to arterial and venous constriction. Venous constriction leads to increase in venous pressure and it also causes increased myocardial contractility. Number two is increased activity of renin-angiotensin system. How does it occur? Inadequate discharge of blood in the arterial system decreases the renal perfusion, increases sodium reabsorption from proximal tubule due to activation of renin-angiotensin. So what happens? The decreased blood pressure leads to increased renin, increased aldosterone production, increased sodium reabsorption, increased blood volume and that leads to increased ventricular filling. Also there is increase in ADH due to decreased destruction of our metabolism of vasopressin. Number three, production of vasodilator substances, natriuretic peptide, atrial and brain natriuretic peptide, prostaglandin E and prostaglandin I2 and the nitric oxide cause vasodilatation and they offset the excessive peripheral vascular constrictive effects caused by sympathetic nervous system. The natriuretic peptides are the vasodilator substances. They decrease the systemic vascular resistance and they are naturally occurring diuretics. Normal level is 100 pg per ml. A level of more than 500 pg per ml indicates a heart failure. Natriuretic peptides are increased more in reduced rejection fraction heart failure but they are also increased in preserved rejection failure heart failure. But the levels are increased with age and renal impairment and may be falsely low in obesity. A very very low level of BNP with dyspnea excludes the cardiac causes.